you've appointed, you've been appointed to do his will. And your food is to do his will. According to that, you're supposed to live by. If you want to have food, if you want to have nourishment, if you want to have energy, the food given to you is to do his will. Well, a father, tell a child, I want you to die without food. No. So the father would not want you to die without food, to die from hunger. But now the food is, if you can do his will, it's like food. So God will provide for you how to do his will. He wants to show you his will. He wants to guide you how to do his will. Because it's your food. The Father will give you food. Uh, so that's not just the bread. That's the word from his mouth. I will eat, not, I will live not by that bread, but from the word from his mouth because his word is his will his word is his will and to do that will that is my food amen you with me but you can feed your body with a lot of other hamors where you eat rubbish that is poisoning your body poisoning your heart bring poison in your soul bring poison in your mind and you can eat that food that will destroy your life. This is my food to do the will of my father. This is my food, says the enemy. This, the world says, this is your, will be your food. You are living this way. You will not use the name of Jesus. You will not talk about Christ in the workplace. You will have a certain professional conduct way of, way of living. And in that religion is here and your job is there. This is what you will do. This is what you will not do. When people use the name of the Lord in vain, what will you do? Condemn them. No, rubbish. You've not called to condemn them. But somebody used that name, you will respond to that name. You will respond to that name. Somebody say Jesus and you will respond to that name. Amen? I did it only once or twice in a, in a, at the, the, the Star Kinney Core. You remember? They touched all those places, hey? In spite of COVID. Yeah. Now we're there in the movie. When they use the name of Jesus. Then you must stand up. You're going to do that next time, hey? I've challenged some Kriari guys to do it, and I never heard any testimony about it, so I don't know if it ever happened. But, uh, so when they use the name of Jesus, stand up and say, Yes, that's my Lord. I love him. Oh, no. You, no. And all the devils from hell says, no, you cannot do that. I mean, let's not disturb hell now. Are you with me? You are called to do his will. And his will is that you will always honor him in spite of what. So anybody wants to use that name, you're going to honor that name. God says, I hear you are speaking to Jesus. Awesome. What is he saying to you? I said that to an, uh, one guy. He was very confused. <laughs> and then he used it again. He said, Yo, you're still speaking to Jesus, eh? And later he felt so uncomfortable about it. You know the other story. Ach, Nicolien, mag ik hem maar weer vertel? Kan ik maar, dank je. When we had to get the permit... To have a permit here for uh, to have a Christian school on a farm ground. And I'm there at the glass palace. And there's this one guy. And he's one of the top guys now, you know. He's like on the 11th floor, you know, something there. And, uh, and he's, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> By the second time, he came to, yes, yes. I said, yes, I love him. I said to him, I can't remember, it was me and somebody from Kriari. And then he would go on. And then he said, and he says, yes, yes, hallelujah. I say, and he said, yes, I said, yes, my king. And he, he's going to speak to you. I said, yes, oh, he loves you very much. 
I had to say it like 30, 40 times before it really started to click in him. What is happening here? And then he, he started to try and keep it back, keep it back. Now I can walk out there. I could have just said, you cannot use the name of the Lord in vain. Yes, that's right. But maybe that was not what the Spirit wanted me to do. Because now when I leave, and tonight if he thinks about it, or just now in 15 minutes later or 5 minutes later, he's going to say to somebody else, yes, yes. And he remember, he loves me. He has planned for my life. He died for me. He can be my master. He did this. He did this. He's that. He's that. He says, I'm this. He says, I'm this. He says, I'm that. And you've put some incorruptible seed there. <sighs> Whatever the enemy meant for evil, God can turn it for our good. For that man, may it be so in Jesus' name. I pray that. That I hope, I believe, I trust that that man turned for God. Are you with me? But I had an appointment. I had an appointment in that place for a certain reason. And he's not there, there to resist the devil against this, you know, standing against this man with all his rubbish. No, to go and have an impact. Go and have an impact where God has called you to be. Amen. Now I wanted to start with something tonight, but I don't get to the, that point to start. So, I don't know. Well, what's the time? Is it appointed unto man? Nine. Not to finish. Twenty minutes to stop. Okay. So, anybody say it's something that was in the spirit or in the flesh? Nico. Nico? We forgive you in the name of the Lord. Okay. You are forgiven. Great. Good. Was was nog geweest? You've been appointed. A moment of silence and prayer for Jolene. Darin, you want to pray for her quickly? Oh, she will only pray for herself. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Okay. You've been appointed. Amen. Because God has an agenda. And he's giving you his. So you better respect him and give him attention. And appear before him and stay accountable to him. So that you don't go and kill your son. You don't go and slaughter your Isaac. Because you do it in performance instead of from a place of relationship. As you lament my Okay. Appointed them to go ahead to every town, every place where he was about to go. So now people will be sent into your life because God is about to come and visit you in a certain way. You pray for certain things to happen. God, come and help me with this. And then he sends somebody to you. But you think he's the obstacle. <laughs> but he's actually to the answer because be, be careful what you ask for. They always say, hey, oh, Lord, have mercy. What you ask for, Lord, less of me, more of you. Don't pray that. Less of me, more of you. Because then he will send people into your life that will challenge the you that must become less. So that, <clears throat> so that God can fulfill, fulfill your dream. And answer your prayer. Your father wants to answer your prayer. Hello? So you will send people that become nosy about stuff in your life. You know? And if you're somebody that can easily justify, you will bring that wonderful person. And, yeah, to just let that thing come up. So that it must be cut off. In Jesus' name. And your prayer has been answered. You thought the devil came and it was as much a distraction in the name of Jesus. And, and, and you pray against this distraction. 
You pray against the fulfillment of your prayer. What, how confused can we then get? So God, why is this person in my life? My flesh and my soul says, no. <laughs> why are my soul so downcast? Why are my soul so in, in a fight against that person? Then you say, after that, after you evaluated what's happening in your soul, you say, what is Holy Spirit testifying in my spirit through the Word of God? Remember that's what we said, eh? Holy Spirit's testimony in my spirit through the Word of God. Why am I here? Why that person? Why that? Not the old man at the graveyard. Why? My wife always likes that joke. Me. Me merely. Okay. JP, you remember the joke. Well, the man that in the, in the graveyard said, why did you die? Why did you die? He was crying. He was sobbing. He was in a state. And the gardener asked, you, you really loved the, what do you call? The deceased. Something like that. Hey. No, I never knew him. Okay. And the next day, that man was there again. Why did you die? Why did you die? And he was manifesting, crying. And the gardener came again. He said, Sorry, Mr. Who is the man that died? He said, It's my wife's first husband. <laughs> now, it cannot be. It cannot be something like that. Are you with me? Now, how, why did I tell you that joke? It links up. Why? <laughs> why is that person in my life? Yes, man, that. <laughs> why? And we don't understand many times the why. But God has a plan. Can you have believe that God will not waste time with you? They say, I believe. God is not wasting time with me it's only you that can waste the time not him so ask god god why is that man in my life why is that woman why is this one why that one and if he doesn't give you an answer just go by faith and know god is the best for me so i will just carry on full out with what god has for me amen you're still here appointed give attention give respect he has placed you in a certain place you are there for a specific reason. You are there for a specific reason. Even if you don't understand why you're there. Even if you feel, I cannot do this. Even if I feel I cannot stand in front of people, you will stand in front of people. Even if I feel it's hell and it's frustration and I fear and my the mic is trembling, I will go and stand there because God said to me, I have appointed you to go and stand there and sing those songs and testify about me. <sighs> Long before uh, the David Song Group that you all know the stories about for three months that and then from self-consciousness to technique consciousness to God consciousness and how God just opened that up. Wonderful. But when I came into the army, right in the beginning, there was a lady and she talked about drug abuse. So they, she talked about to us a thousand, about a thousand new army guys that came in from school or university or from whatever now we are for the two year years we are there in kimberley and we are and so they have this program and they gave over to this lady and she spoke with like this with all the time and there were the, the, the whole world everything was sitting this way in the same way and it was so pathetic oh and everybody was speaking everybody was speaking to one another and I even want to do swear. I want to say, wow, how pathetic. How pathetic. And how she said, how it's not good, to, how it's not good to use uh, drugs, abuse uh, drugs and do this and not to, and to do that. I mean, it's a joke, totally. And I was sitting there and saying, God, what now? This is not right. And God said, so what are you going to do now? spraying in tongues for the lady but nothing changed okay Lord 
what am I supposed to do? And I just felt the thing of go and give a testimony. Now, this is way before three months of standing in front of people trying to get over fear. This was right, right, right in the beginning before that. And it was like, no. And in the end, uh, you know when you've, sometimes you know there's no way that I can sit here anymore. You've experienced that, you know. You just know you better move now. Uh, up. Got out in it. People look at you, you know there's a thousand. You stand up, here you go to the corporal. And in a certain way he would speak to you at that stage in the beginning. Not to be repeated now. But in any case, and he, so what, what, what? Now I just want to testify. Uh, I want to testify. Put me there. Walk up to the lady, to the mic. There's a man. He was very involved in drugs and this and this and this and this. And he wanted to testify. No, I wasn't involved at all in those stuff. But, but in any case, okay, he just gave me the mic. I was like, for a few seconds, you know, like that. Most probably people felt, oh, sister. And then, then God helped me. So my brother, many times God will appoint you to have an appointment in a place in a way that you would not like. You will not like it. But then if you can push through. And then I shared, and I shared, and then I felt the presence of God, and I shared. Are you with me? But I first had to get over myself. Over this trauma of fear, if I can say like even that, and self-consciousness, and how this is not... And afterwards, I felt two out of ten. Afterwards, a lot of the guys came to me and said, thank you so much that you had the guts. I would never have had the guts just to stand up and talk like that. And I was a little bit thinking, are you guys making a joke? And then I realized it really touched these guys. So even if you can give yourself a two out of ten, allow God to use you. Allow God to use you. Even if you can give yourself only two out of ten. Forget about your two or your ten. Amen. Mag God jou gebruik. Amen. Are you with me? Into every place where he was about to go. Let it be so in Jesus name. Okay. Then. After he said this. He told them. The harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. God wants to send you. God wants to. Appoint people to go to the harvest. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers. And that asking is me praying for you that you will go. You praying for me that I will go. Because we are the workers. Let's say, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Not pray that people will become workers. No, there's workers already, but they're not willing to be sent out. Or they are so busy with themselves, they are working and building their own houses, or so, build, so busy with their own way of doing that they are not available to be sent out. Pray the work, the, the Lord for the workers of the harvest. Not just for new people to come in, to be trained, to be workers. But for workers to start to work. But for the workers to do the work that they are supposed to do. That the workers will go and fetch the harvest. Many farmers, I helped my grandfather on the farm many years as a teenager. But you can have workers on the, on the farm. But that doesn't mean they work. The name worker doesn't mean the person works. Anybody saw that? Maybe with yourself also sometimes. I saw that with myself even sometimes, you know. Yeah. It's amazing the power of the eye. You know, I would come here. And not one of these guys, but some people, they will be in the field, you know. 
And then I, I drive on the, on the road. And then I see the guy standing. And I come. And I enter. They are standing. Come and enter. And then the car is here. And for some reason, they see the presence of the car. Of the pastor. I don't know what. Oh, no. Amazing the power you can have, you know? <laughs> have you seen that? Then you see, and they work. Just two or three. And you walk, and you suddenly do this. You're standing. <laughs> and then when they see, they work. Ah, oh, Lord, have mercy. I was there, got the t shirt. And because I got the T-shirt, I can know how it works not to work. And again, you don't need to smile here. <laughs> but, ach, may God help us, man. Huh? Is that not good? You know, when somebody phones you, Pastor, I found them. They are laying there, sleeping in the grass. <clears throat> Three guys that had to... Was jij nog hier zo, JP? Toen dat gebeurde, daar je Kan je doen. <laughs> What's happening with Jolene there at the back? You must come here and sit in the front. No. Ach, no, my brother, my sister. Pray. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord for the, of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. To send out workers. You are sent out to work. Let's say, I am sent out to work. You are not sent out just to be in a place. You are sent out to work. So next year, you're going to do a work because you believe you are sent out by God. And if you believe you are sent out by God, you will work. And you will be faithful in your work. Because you will work as if unto the Lord. But through your work, you must be able to see this is for kingdom purpose. And if you cannot align your work in such a way that you do it by faith for kingdom purpose, you're not, you're not in God's business. You're not busy with His business. You're doing what you're doing for yourself. Right? It's going to be burned up. You'll be saved as through fire, the word says. But whatever you've built... Whatever work you've done, it will be burned away, according to Scripture. Because you've built not with gold, and that what is from heaven. You've built with rubbish, with good ideas, with own this or that or that or that. You want to go to hell? I want to go to hell. We will go to heaven, but we will be saved as through fire, the Word says. God's going to help us. Amen. We're not going to waste time. God is sending me out to do a specific job. So, let's pray that. Pray that over your life. I will be sent out to do the work your Father has called you to do. Let's say, I'm sent out to do the work my Father has called me to do. And that is my food. You will not die in that. You will grow through doing the work that God has called you to do. You will grow by doing that. Amen.